<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat <laughs> and Quaker Puff Rice, <laughs> the breakfast cereal shot from guns, <laughs> present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. What's up, Doc? It's a smash hit. It's the greatest offer ever made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Imagine getting five Bugs Bunny comic books for only 15 cents and only one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice. Wow, Doc, what an offer. Yes, hear how you can get five all-new, brand-new, pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. Stand by for details later. Peter Bailey was nearing 80 when he joined the rush for gold in the Yukon. And though he had prospected most of his life, the rugged country, bitter cold, and strenuous work there were too much for the old man. His strength soon gave out. He built a small cabin on the edge of the settlement of Caribou Creek. One day, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King called on him and found him ill and in bed. What seems to be the matter, Peter? Old age. And Doc Saunders says it's partly because I've got nothing to live for. <laughs> Have you relatives? No. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Twenty-five years ago, I was prospecting down in Nevada. A terrible sandstorm came up. It blew for days, and I thought I wouldn't live through it. Yes? Finally, it cleared. And me and my pack mules started for Silver City. Well... We hadn't gone more than a couple of miles until we came on a tragedy. The man and his wife and little baby son had been caught in the storm. The man and woman were dead. The boy was alive. Uh -huh. I was broke at the time and just a wandering prospector. I took the baby boy to the sisters at a convent in Silver City and left him. Did you learn who his parents were? No, yes. They had papers on him. Name was Quinn. But the sisters never found any relatives. I had a letter saying they'd named him Terry and would bring him up. That's the last I ever heard of him. Now I'd like to find him. Here's what I'd like you to do for me, Sergeant. A month later in Seattle, young Terry Quinn and his wife Alice received an official-looking letter with the insignia of the Northwest Mounted Police in the upper left-hand corner. Who's it from, Terry? Well, let's see. It's signed by Sergeant Preston of the Mounted Police. Here's another letter that's sealed. Well, what does the sergeant's letter say? It says, I've been requested to locate you in behalf of Mr. Peter Bailey of Caribou Creek, Yukon Territory. His letter's enclosed. That's all. Well, who's Peter Bailey? I don't know. Well, open the letter. Okay. Alice, look! It's a bank draft. Well, let's see it. It's for a thousand dollars. It's made out to me. Oh, Terry, there must be some mistake. I'll read his letter and find out. I am the man who found you when your folks died in a Nevada. Old sense. Peter Bailey repeated the story he had told Sergeant Preston about finding the baby boy many years before. He concluded his letter with, "I'd like to see you before I die. I'm enclosing a draft for a thousand dollars to pay your way up here if you'll come." That's impossible, except the money is a gift from an old man who may not be needing it. Terry, is it true what he says? Oh, it's got to be true. The sisters in the convent told me I was found by a miner. They'd lost track of him when he left the States. Well, what will you do about it? He saved my life. 
I'll go to him. But oh, what about your job? And me? I'll quit the job, and you'll go with me. It was still summer when Terry Quinn and his wife Alice arrived in the Yukon. The trip by boat down the great Yukon River to Dawson had been one wonderful surprise after another. I'll have to start packing, Alice. Purser says we'll arrive in Dawson in less than an hour. Terry, does Mr. Bailey know you're bringing your wife? Oh, sure. When I cabled Sergeant Preston that I'd come, I told him I was bringing you. <laughs> now, honey, let's get back and go to shore. As the river steamer far north nosed into the landing at Dawson, the usual crowd of spectators was on hand to greet the new arrivals. Some through curiosity, and others who had friends aboard. However, there were two men who had different reasons for being there. One of them was Red Miller, a confidence man still in his early 30s. His companion was Joe Ajax. See anyone in that crowd who looks like a sucker, Red? No, I don't, Joe. Mighty slim pickings, if you ask me. They got young couple climbing into the hack. They haven't got much more in their fare up here. And a CD, all right. Hey, dropped something out of his pocket when he climbed into the hack. Yeah, I see it. Sneak over there and put your foot on it till the hack pulls out. Then pick it up. I'll get it. Wait for it. A short time later, the two confidence men sat at a table in the Borealis Cafe and studied the letter which had fallen from the pocket of young Terry Quinn. What do you make of it, Red? It speaks for itself, Joe. It gives me an idea how we can get some money. How do you mean? Didn't you tell me that Sergeant Preston left town a couple of days ago? Yeah. He went on a patrol in the back country somewhere. That leaves the coast clear for what I got in mind. And the kid and his wife took a carriage. Did you notice what hotel it was from? Yeah, it was, uh, it was going to the Metropole. Why? You wait here. I'm going over and have a talk with this Terry Quinn. But I'll use a fake name. Come back as soon as I could, Alice. Now I'll take you to dinner. Did you see Sergeant Preston? Uh, no, I didn't. He's out of town on a patrol. Told me at the barracks he won't be back for a week or more. Oh, that's too bad. I hoped we could thank him for going to the trouble of finding you. Well, so did I. Yeah, we'll see him sometime, I'm sure. Did you find out how we can get to Caribou Creek? Yeah. A mining company sending a pack train up that way tomorrow. We can go along with it. <laughs> You'll have to ride horseback. Oh, I won't mind that. I love to ride. Uh, talk to the foreman of the pack trail. He said that he'd heard that Peter Bailey was ill. Well, if he knows about him, we won't have any trouble finding Mr. Bailey. I'll go. Yes, sir? Are you Mr. Quinn? Yes, that's my name. Won't you step inside? Oh, yes, thanks. My name's Crawford. Glad to know you, Mr. Crawford. Uh, this is my wife. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Quinn. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. I've been waiting for you to arrive in Dawson. I have bad news for you. Bad news? What kind of bad news? Well, your friend and mine, Mr. Peter Bailey, is dead. Oh, no. What? Yeah, he passed away a week ago yesterday. An hour before he died, he asked me to come to Dawson to meet you. Red Miller, using the name of Crawford, had gained enough information from the two letters he had found in the envelope to tell a convincing story. When he finished, he got up from his chair as if to leave. Well, Mr. Crawford, we, we both thank you for coming all the way to Dawson to tell us. Yes, it was very kind of you. Uh, could I ask a question? Of course, Mrs. Quinn. Go ahead. Did, did Mr. Bailey leave an estate? I'm sorry to say he didn't. In fact, when his debts were paid, a few of his friends had to bury him. He sent me a thousand dollars. Yes, he told me about that. We have more than half of it left. If that'll help to pay his expenses... No, no, no. He wanted you to keep it. Anyway, you needed to pay your expenses back to Seattle. I... Uh, I had hoped to stay here. Well, I wouldn't advise it on the money you have. It's very expensive here. Steamer Far North starts its return trip up the river tomorrow. I'd advise you to book passage. <laughs> yes, sir. I guess that would be the best thing for us. Yeah, I'll be going now. I'm sorry I had to bring such bad news. When Red Miller left, Terry Quinn and his wife sorrowfully began repacking their battered valises. Alice was crying softly. <laughs> now, honey, don't cry. Can't be helped. We knew he was old and sick. He said so in his letter. Oh, but Terry must have wanted to see you so very badly. 
It's a shame he couldn't have lived for another few days. Yeah, I know. There's nothing we could do about it. Terry. There, there, now. Terry, I don't want to go back home. Neither do I. Now that I've seen the Yukon, I love it. I don't want to go back. If you could only get a job, we could stay here. Hey, I just remembered something. What? Maybe I can get a job. Sure, I'll bet I can. But where? How? The boat leaves tomorrow. Honey, honey, I just remembered. When I went to see the foreman of the pack train, he was talking to a man about a job in a mining camp. The man turned him down. But you don't know anything about mining. It was a cook's job. I cooked in a restaurant for two years. Oh, Terry. Terry, maybe you can get it. Give me my hat. Oh. I'm going right back there and apply for that cook's job. While on patrol into the back country, Sergeant Preston and King made a point of stopping at Caribou Creek, for the Mountie had news for old Peter Bailey. He found the old man in good spirits. Sit down, Sergeant. Thanks, Peter. Come here, King, you old rascal. Has the sergeant been treating you right since you were last here? Peter, I have news for you. Uh, about the boy? Yes, I had a cable from him. He'll be here any day now. Glory be. <laughs> I feel better already. And that's not all. <laughs> no? He's bringing his wife. His wife? Now, isn't it just like an old critter like me to forget that young folks grow up and get married? <laughs> <laughs> so the boy's bringing her along. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some woman-cooked meals. I'm sure you will. Well, King and I'll be in town for a few days, Pete, so we'll be back before we leave. Hey, you'd better be. <laughs> By the way... You going up to Doc Saunders' place? Why, yes, we're going there now. Would you mind taking that bottle along, the one on the table there? Have him fill it up with some more of that tonic he makes for me. Be glad to, Peter. When Sergeant Preston started to pick up the bottle, he saw a piece of paper on the table with the words, Last Will and Testament on it. Something told him to question Peter Bailey about it. Making your will already, Peter? My will? Oh, yes. I wanted to speak to you about that. Huh? I'd like to have you witness it for me. A will takes two witnesses. I'll ask Doc to sign it with me later on. Just so you don't forget it before you leave town. I won't. Come on, King. Let's go see Doc Saunders. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Listen, don't miss this chance, for we want to send you five, yes, I said five, one, two, three, four, five Bugs Bunny comic books. Wow, Doc, what an offer. I just got mine, and are they swell? They're just off the presses, an exclusive offer from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The delicious, crisp, nourishing breakfast cereals shot from guns. They're for me. And these handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books are all new. Can't anybody buy them at the store? No, they're not sold anywhere else. You've never seen them or read them before. Gee, look at all the pages. There are 32 full-color pages in every book. So, in all five books... There are 160 pages. Jam-packed with adventures, laughs, mystery, excitement. You said it. Look what I got in set B. Yes, what a peck of fun you'll have reading them. Bugs Bunny joins the Marines. Bugs Bunny meets the Dwarf Ghost. Bugs Bunny and Buried Treasure. Bugs Bunny finds Atlantin's Lamp. Bugs Bunny outwits the smugglers. Can I get some more? Yes, the best part of it is, fellas and girls, we'll not only send you a set of five different new Bugs Bunny comic books, we'll also let you know how you can get ten more books. They're all new. And I like the way they fit in my pocket. So do this, everybody. Go to your grocer. Buy Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. You can tell them by the Quaker man on the front of the red and blue package. Cut off the top of the package and send it along with 15 cents and your name and address. Send to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now hurry, don't put it off till it's too late. Remember, for all five Bugs Bunny comic books, all new, all different... Send only 15 cents in coin, your name and address, and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. A short time after Sergeant Preston and King left the cabin, 
Peter Bailey heard a knock at the door. Come in. Are you Mr. Peter Bailey? Yes. Uh, won't you come in? Come on, Red. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Mr. Bailey, I'm Terry Quinn. Terry Quinn? Well, well, well. Sergeant Preston told me you'd be arriving any day now. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Uh... Uh, where's your wife? My wife? Uh, I left her in Dawson. I thought it'd be better to come up here first. Uh, who's this fellow with you? An old friend of mine, Mr. Miller. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Bailey. I happened to run into Joe, uh, into Terry, down in Dawson. I volunteered to show him the way up here. He's a tenderfoot, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. But he won't be one long. <laughs> <laughs> right. Joe Ajax, knowing the contents of the letter, had little difficulty convincing Peter Bailey that he was Terry Quinn. Then Red Miller made a mistake. Joe, uh, tell Mr. Bailey how you wrote to me once trying to locate him. Sure. Well, just a minute. Twice since you got here, your friends called you Joe. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, well, it's a nickname. Uh, a lot of people in the States call me Joe. Uh, I see. Well, I like Terry better. So do I. Hmm. Um, here's the letter you wrote to me, and uh, also the one I got from Sergeant Preston. Uh, let's see it. Uh. Yes, that's the one I wrote, all right. I'm glad to see you got it with you. It proves who you are. Hey, what's that? <laughs> oh, that's Sergeant Preston's dog. Come on, King. Is <laughs> Sergeant Preston in town? Yes, he is. Well, what's this pooch got in his mouth? My tonic. Doc Saunders sent it down here with him. <laughs> right now I feel I can use some of it. Guess it's the excitement of seeing Terry. Well, I'll fix it up for you while you and Joe, uh, I mean Terry, talk a spell. Here, dog, let me have that. The directions are on the bottle. You'll find some water over there in the bucket. All right. <laughs> now, Terry, tell me all about your wife. Well, Mr. Bailey, I'm sure that As you... old Peter Bailey listened to the young man he believed to be Terry Quinn, he paid no attention to Red Miller. As Red poured the tonic into a glass, added water, and then guardedly dropped in a grayish powder which he had kept secreted in his vest pocket. He stirred the contents and handed it to Peter Bailey. Here you are, Mr. Bailey. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Miller. Pardon me a second, Terry, while I take my tonic. You go right ahead. Yeah. <coughs> Tastes kind of different. Take the glass, Mr. Miller. Sure. Uh, I, uh, I can't breathe very well. Maybe you'd better take a nap. As Peter Bailey eased back on his pillow, he realized that something was happening to him which he couldn't understand. His heart was pounding, and breathing became difficult. Then it suddenly dawned upon him that he had been poisoned. The great dog king was lying near the door, and the old miner's first impulse was to sick him on the two men beside the bed. But Miller, he had noticed, was armed, and he was afraid King would be killed before he could summon help. Peter Bailey summoned all his strength to control his own terror. And his voice was calm when he said, King, King, go get Sergeant Preston. Get Doc Saunders. Hey, come back here. Stop him, Red. Hey, shoot him. King had bounded through the door, which had been left open. Red rushed after him. He drew a pistol from his shoulder holster, but he didn't fire. Why didn't you shoot him? I didn't have a chance. Dog was around the corner of the house before I could raise my gun. But you bring the Mountie. Let him bring him. When he gets here, we'll be gone. The old man will be dead and no marks on him. Looked like he died in his sleep. No one knows we were here. Yes, you're right, Red. He's passed out now. Now, come on, Joe. Let's get out of here. Red, we haven't searched the cabin. I've got more than I hope to get. Do you see this? What is it? It's the old man's will. It was lying on the table, and I read it. He's got an unregistered mine up the creek. And when we stake it out, it'll be ours. Now, come on. As they rushed from the cabin, Peter Bailey lost consciousness. Meanwhile, a mining pack train plodded up the trail toward the town. Uh, there's the cabin where the old man lived. I used to see him whenever we passed there. The door's open. There's smoke coming from the chimney. Maybe Doc Saunders and his Chinese cook are clearing out the cabin. Would you mind, Mr. Clark, if I stop to ask where they buried him? Oh, no, go right ahead, Quinn. We'll stop the pack train in town anyway. We'll wait for you. I'm going too, Terry. Oh, sure, Alice. Come on, get up there. Get up there, boy. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Steady, boy. Let's go in. All right. Uh, uh, Terry, there's no one in here. Someone's in the bed over there. Well, maybe we better not go in. Uh, Alice, that man seems to be in pain. 
Listen to him groan. Oh, Terry, maybe we can help him. Come on, he's sick. But if this was Mr. Bailey's cabin, what, who's this man? I don't know. He's holding something in his hand. It's clutched oh. tight. Can you see what it is? Alice. Alice, where did he get this? Well, what is it? It's the envelope I lost. Oh, Terry, it can't be. Look at it. It's from the mounted police, and it's addressed to me. It's the same one. Meanwhile, King had reached Doc Saunders' office and was trying to tell the physician and Sergeant Preston that Peter Bailey needed them. What's the matter with you, King? Something's wrong. I can tell by the way he's acting. No doubt about that. Maybe Peter Bailey sent him here. That's my guess. We better get down there, Doc. I'll take my medicine and kid along. The old critter may have had a medicine. All right, King. We'll go along with you, fella. I'm ready. Let's go. Meanwhile, back at Peter Bailey's cabin, Alice and Terry Quinn were doing all they could to help the old prospector. Terry, this man is very ill. He's in agony. I better go for a doctor. I can ask uptown where I can find him. Uh, oh, someone's coming here now. Maybe they can tell you where to find a doctor. Uh, one of those men's a man. Hello there. I was just going for a doctor. Hey, I'm a doctor. What's wrong with that man? He seems to be very ill, Doctor. Uh, he, he's in agony. Uh, Let me take a look at him. Did you send my dog to get us? No, Sergeant. There was no dog here when my wife and I arrived a few minutes ago. I'm Sergeant Preston. Who are you? Uh, Sergeant Preston? We were hoping to meet you, Sergeant. I'm Terry Quinn. This is my wife, Alice. Oh, that's a surprise. I only hope you haven't arrived too late. Too late? For what? Peter Bailey seems to be in a desperate Peter condition. Peter Bailey? You mean this man on the bed is Peter Bailey? Why, of course. Who'd you think he was? We were told in Dawson that Peter Bailey died a week ago. Uh, Sergeant Preston. Yes, Doc. Hand me that glass on the table, will you please? All right, here you are. I want a smell of it. What's wrong, Doc? Peter Bailey has been poisoned. What? what? In the next few minutes, Doc Saunders and Sergeant Preston worked feverishly over the old miner while Terry Quinn and his wife looked down helplessly. After a while, Doc Saunders said, Luckily, we got here when we did, Sergeant, for two reasons. Two reasons? Yes. I think we've saved Peter's life. And we got here before this couple had a chance to get away. Get away? What do you mean, Doctor? As far as I know, you're the only ones who would have a reason to do away with Peter Bailey. You think we poisoned him? Who else would have done it? Oh, but this is terrible. Just a minute, Doc. I want to ask them a question. Go right ahead, Sergeant. There was a piece of paper on this table here. Where is it? A piece of paper? Oh, we didn't see any paper there. What was it? Peter Bailey's will. He left everything he had to you. Oh, but this is horrible. We wouldn't try to kill him. You may have a hard time convincing a jury of that, young woman. You can search us. We didn't take it. King, what's the matter, boy? King had found a scent. He wanted to tell Sergeant Preston about it. When he saw his master look out the door, he ran with his nose close to the ground for 10 or 15 feet. He whined in eagerness, then looked up, barked, and ran back to the starting point. What's the matter with King, Sergeant? There's something wrong. I think King's found something. King knew he had to tell the sergeant about his discovery. Once more, he sniffed the ground and then looked up at the Mountie. All right, King, I understand, boy. What's the matter with him, Sergeant? He wants me to follow. Oh, we haven't got time for that, Sergeant. This is a case of attempted murder, plain and simple. When? Yes, Sergeant. I'm going to ask you to go with me. Your wife can stay here with the doctor. You mean you're going to follow King? Yes, I am, Doc. I'll ride your horses, Quinn. Get mounted. <laughs> Wait here until we return. Get up there. Get up there, boy. The great dog, King, bounded ahead of the two horses, his nose to the ground... As they rode along, young Terry Quinn explained everything to Sergeant Preston. How he had lost the letter, how a man calling himself Crawford had told him of Peter Bailey's death, and how he had only a short time before found the lost letter clutched in the old miner's hand. I swear we didn't try to kill Peter Bailey, Sergeant. I believe you, Terry. I hope we can prove your innocence. You really think the dog knows? He knows something. Your fate rests with King right now. All right, get let's go there, boy. Come on, after leaving the cabin, Red Miller and Joe Ajax had walked nearly four miles through the forest. Tired and weary, they sat down to rest. Suddenly... Hey, I hear somebody riding this way. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. Don't start getting jumpy nerves. I can't help it. I keep wondering if the old man was dead by the time the doc and Sergeant Preston got to him. If he wasn't... I gave like... him enough knockout powder to kill five men. Hey, look... One of those men is a Mountie. It's the dog with him. Joe and Red leaped to their feet and drew their guns as King charged ahead of Sergeant Preston. I'll get him. Sergeant Preston's bullet struck Red's gun hand. Red's shot went wild. Meanwhile, Joe took the brunt of King's attack. That's enough, King. That'll do. Down, boy. Hold that. You're both covered. My arm. My arm. He's dead. 
dog back. King won't hurt you now that you're a prisoner. Uh, Hurry. Yes, sir. Search these two and see if you can find Pete Bailey's will. My arm, it feels like it's busted. I'll take care of that arm in a minute. First, I'll take care of these guns. Oh, Sergeant, Sergeant, yeah. I found something. The will? Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, it's Peter Bailey's will. Oh. Two hours later, Sergeant Preston and Terry rejoined the doctor and Alice in Peter Bailey's cabin and told what had happened. Doc was all apologies. Oh, I'm mighty sorry for thinking you nice young folks would try to kill Peter. I don't know how I'll ever make it up to you. It's all right, Doc. We forgive you. (laughs) Sure we do. In fact, I'll admit that you had plenty of reason to suspect us. Our only hope is that Mr. Bailey will live. What are his chances, Doc? Very good, Sergeant. Fortunately, we got to him before the poison could take full effect. He'll be as good as new in a few days. Well, we can thank King for saving him. He's the smartest dog I've ever seen. I said thank you. Yeah, King not only saved Peter Bailey, he also got the men who tried to kill him. Terry, you and Alice are going to stay here now, aren't you? You bet we are. Of course. We're going to try to make Peter Bailey's last years the happiest ones he's ever known. Good. Well, King, I guess we're not needed here any longer. We'll shove on. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Imagine what happens when Bugs Bunny turns detective and unearths a skeleton in the story of Bugs Bunny's secret agent. Think of the riot Bugs causes when he throws a big juicy pie at a major in Bugs Bunny Joins the Marines. Yes, there's action, thrills, laughs, mystery in the five Bugs Bunny comic books we have for you. They're all new. You've never seen or read them before. And here's the big surprise. They're all yours, all five, for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Each handy pocket-sized book is 32 pages thick. And in the five books we'll send you, you get 160 full-color pages. What's more... We'll also send you full information on how easy it is to get ten more books. But time's a-wasting. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Yes, as Bugs Bunny says, you must hurry. These books are going fast. Act today. Send only 15 cents in coin, not stamps, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Address your letter to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77... Illinois. Did you get that address? It's Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Nipper proves himself. King and I had stopped at Selkirk to see our friend the constable, expecting a quiet evening. But we were called upon to investigate a case that turned into a nightmare for a little girl named Judy and for Nipper, an unwanted dog. Nipper and King tried to save Judy from a wolf pack. And believe me, that was one night I was glad to have a dog like King. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker...